I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, and welcome back to the Niagara Pro Tips. This video today will continue on with the event service. Uh, hopefully you watched the first part of the video where we showed using some of the different component sources and component type sources to monitor for events and utilizing uh, the BQL filters or maybe a type filter or things of that nature um, to narrow down the, the events that are being processed. Um, now, uh, what I want to talk about at this point are the recipients. So looking in the event palette, there's a recipient subfolder here, and there's a number of uh, recipients here. I'm going to talk about the, the first three. Um, the sysdef is something that gets utilized with the enterprise security product. Um, certainly something you could set up, um, but in most cases, probably unless you're using enterprise security, you probably wouldn't have that set up. So the idea is um, whatever uh, component source or component type source or alarm or history source, whatever sources we have, we filtered the events down and uh, we've gotten down to just the events that we're concerned with. And we want to do something to, to notify ourselves about that. Now, uh, there is an alarm recipient, uh, which you can uh, drag out of the palette onto the wire sheet then. And you can link the um, uh, event topic from the filter to the process action on the alarm recipient. And when we take a look at the alarm recipient, you'll see it's just a, a simple enable, disabled, and then an alarm class selector. Uh, so we could send it to the HVAC alarms or network alarms, system alarms, you know, whatever alarm class that, that we want. So the idea here then is, um, in this case, this filter is looking for um, occupied cooling or heating set points, uh, which have been overridden right uh, so if i come in here and uh, invoke an override on the ot cool set point then that should increment the counter uh, and it should have fired the alarm recipient so if i take a look at the uh, alarm service here there's the hvac uh, alarms uh, class here it's linked into the management and the master console so if i take a look at the console here we'll see um, that there's an alarm recipient uh, or a source that's coming from this event service alarm recipient. And when I look at the uh, alarm record, we'll see there's the event ID. That's the UUID from the event. The event source um, was the OT cool set point underneath the Ace Edge Network local device. And then the event value tells me uh, that the property changed and it's the property, uh, the slot path to the property, um, the out slot value, um, the uh, 74 and the overridden. So it's detected the, the fact that the value was overridden and it came from, you know, the numeric writable uh, that was in the, in the station there. So it gives me that information in the alarm record. Now, uh, there's also uh, a uh, email recipient. So we could uh, just as easily, uh, I, I don't have an email account um, configured in the station currently to demonstrate this, but same idea, you would link the um, topic event to the process action. And when you look at the email recipient, similar to you know an email recipient for alarming or, or whatnot, uh, the only difference here is instead of the B alarm record being passed into the action, the B event is being passed in. So we have access to the timestamp, um, the value. We could also um, use source, so percent source to, to string or uh, UUID, so percent UUID, you know, percent or something like that. So we can access the timestamp, the value, the source, and the UUID. And then you can select an email account and who you want to send it to and that sort of thing. You would get an email with the information whenever that event was detected in the station. So this could be any number of things. Like I could monitor the user service um, for property added events and where um, the, the property being added was a, a user account, right, or something. So I would get a notification if someone added a new user. Or I could monitor the lockout um, property value on all user accounts using a type a component type subscriber for uh, B user types and then use a filter to narrow down to the uh, lockout property. So if any user got locked out because of failed login attempts, then the event filter would fire and send an email or generate an alarm, uh, you know, in that case. So it, it can be very handy um, to monitor for, for these sorts of activities and to give some notification. Um, 
There's also uh, a station recipient as well. And uh, you could certainly uh, add a, a station recipient in here. Uh, same kind of thing. This is the, this is very similar to sending alarms between stations. So there's the event topic to the process action. And then when you look at the property sheet, then you'll select, uh, you know, a supervisor station uh, that you want to route the event to. So then that station would need the event service in the station to receive that event and process it. Okay. Now, uh, another thing where this might be useful uh, is this edge controller in particular. So with the edge controllers, there's no onboard battery, uh, you know, backup like maybe a legacy J6 or 3 or 2 had. Um, there's no critical data service. So when you look under the uh, platform services, there's no data recovery service here. Uh, the edge controller doesn't have onboard SRAM or anything of that nature. So uh, when you're when you are working with edge controllers, some things to sort of think about and keep in mind is the uh, station save frequency, right? And it defaults to 24 hours. So you really might want to consider uh, decreasing the station save frequency to, to something reasonable, uh, maybe an hour or, or two or something like that, maybe 12 hours. But um, just you know, consider reducing that station auto save frequency because without battery and without data recovery service, if the power is removed, then you have a potential for loss of data, including alarm and history records and uh, set point changes, schedule changes, you know, things of that nature. Now, we don't want to get too aggressive, you know, with the station auto save frequency, but uh, we could do something uh, with the event service maybe to track when changes are happening that are, are worth monitoring and, and saving the station at a higher frequency. So, for example, I have a component event source here, which is monitoring the points under the local edge device. So it's it's monitoring um, all of these points here. The depth is set to one and the folder is set to that uh, points container here. And then I'm using a filter to uh, only filter out the events, the property changed events, um, which are for the fallback slot. And then I have a component type event source, uh, which is set up for enum schedules. So that would be subscribed to um, the schedule here. And uh, its filter is looking for the last modified slot name. So when you, uh, when you look at the property sheet on a, uh, on a schedule, you'll see that there's a, a last modified property here. And that property will get updated any time the schedule is modified then. So I don't need to worry about looking at all the different um, subschedules and things and events and times and dates. I'll just look at the last modified date on the schedule. And what I've got in this case, uh, I'm using a, uh, a program object, but it could certainly be a, a custom component or a program object or something of that nature. And in this case, I have a, an action called process on my program object. And I've got some other properties like a delay time. Uh, so whenever the action gets invoked, it's going to wait the delay time before it actually triggers the station save. That'll allow multiple changes to kind of coalesce for a minute or two uh, on the station as I'm changing the schedule or changing set points. And they'll coalesce and then it'll trigger a single station save. So the component in this case is going to keep track of how many station saves have occurred uh, in X amount of time. Very similar to uh, like the data recovery service does. And if I save more than three times in the window of time, which in this case is 15 minutes, then it would uh, give me a too many saves. It'll go to true, telling me that maybe I'm uh, something's happening in the station, which is causing the station to be saved too frequently, which might you know affect the longevity of the controller. All right. So uh, the idea here is uh, if I uh, you know go to this schedule editor, for example. Uh, and uh, modify the schedule. So I'll just change an event time here. And save it. And you can see uh, the counter incremented to one here on the station save uh, filter. And the station save pending is true. So the timer is started. Now, if I uh, change the fallback value on one of these control points, that will also trigger the counter on, on this filter, and that invoked the action again. But again, it didn't start a, a save again or reinitiate the timer. So is this looking for any changes that have occurred 
uh, within this delay time that's configured. And once the delay time is expired, then that will actually trigger a station save uh, so that I can go ahead and, and persistently save those configuration properties or those schedule changes or things um, to the flash drive in the event of a power outage on the controller. Now, I, I probably wouldn't want to do that necessarily for histories and alarms, uh, particularly uh, if they're collecting at some regular frequency, um, but I could consider increasing that station save frequency, like I said, maybe once an hour uh, or something like that, so that at least it mitigates the risk some of losing historical or, or alarm records. Um, the other option is obviously to uh, archive those histories and alarms uh, more quickly to uh, a supervisor or to a J station, which you've integrated to over the Niagara network. So then those events will be uh, persisted in the JACE or in the supervisor, um, or you can do the trending and alarming at the next level up. You know, you do the integration to the JACE or the supervisor and do the alarming and trending there as well. Uh, but the event service could certainly be helpful in this sort of case using a program object or a custom component to save the station when certain activity dictates that um, configuration properties or schedules and important things have changed and we want to persist those uh, to prevent loss due to a power outage or something of that nature. Right. So I uh, hope you uh, found this useful information from the event service. It's something that again has been around since the AX days and uh, hope you have some fun playing around with the event service and seeing what you can leverage it for. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video and stay tuned for more Niagara Pro tips in the future.